Yes, ma'am. Mind that floor. There's a rug. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma uh, don't mind me. Just pop in to fetch a symbol that I left behind. Squiggle through here. Oh, goodness me. That looks like heavy work. Ah, uh, uh, no need to follow me. I know precisely where it is. Not scraping any walls, I have. No, it. miss. No. She shunted the Blumenthal into the telephone room, and she's hired a new piano from Brighton. No! Think of the expense! I can only assume the dear Mama's instrument was not quite good enough for her. <laughs> Unbelievable extravagance. Oh, a graveyard. You're quite startled there. I just popped into the kitchen to retrieve this little screwdriver. So useful. Quantities of tin goods from Fortnum and Mason, and Darjeeling tea imported direct from India. No. Rather ostentatious. Not quite the tilling way. You mustn't pass judgment. Dear Evie. <laughs> Not yet. Garden produce. I beg your pardon. <laughs> Still my little joke, Lulu, darling. You may eat every fig in my garden, and I wish there were more. My hot wash bottle. Such a comfort. She practically stripped the entire tree of figs, despite the terms of her tendency, and I just stood by in absolute silence. <clears throat> I couldn't say a word. No. Oh, bad luck. <sighs> Art Copland, I'd like you to cut the lawn today. It's got dreadfully long. Very sorry, Mum. I don't think I can find the time. Uh, Miss Mapp has asked me to manure the strawberry beds today. But what has Miss Mapp got to do with it? You're in my employment now. But my orders are to go to Miss Mapp every morning and she tells me what she wants done. In, in future? I'd like you to come to me every morning and ask me what I would like done. No strawberry beds will be manured until the garden looks less like a tramp that hasn't shaved for a week. Yes, ma'am. I gave it up. Mrs. Lucas's orders. Elizabeth Furious. Oh, what do you have? <laughs> ah, well, I, for one, adore her already. Let battle commence. <laughs> in great perplexity. What seems to be the problem? A little misunderstanding, no doubt. Copland is not clever. I said I would come to see you and make it all right. Oh, nothing easier, dear. He didn't quite grasp. I think that he's in my employment. Naturally, I reminded him of it. He understands now, I hope. <laughs> but my garden produce, Lulu, dear, it is not much use to me if my beautiful pears are left to rot on the trees until the wasps eat them. No doubt that is so. But Copland, whose wages I pay, is of no use to me if he spends his entire time looking after your garden produce. So, that's settled. Lulu, anything would be better than that I should have a misunderstanding with such a dear as you. I won't argue. I won't put my point of view at all. I yield. There. If you can spare Copland for an hour in the morning to take my little fruits and vegetables to the green grace. Quite impossible, I'm afraid, dear. Copland has been neglecting the flower garden dreadfully, so you'll have to find somebody else. Oh, precious one, it shall be just as you wish. <laughs> and I must run away. Oh, uh, Mr. Pilson's here, ma'am. Show him 
into the dining room, Grosvenor. Slowly. All right. Things are beginning to move, Georgie. Night marches, manoeuvres. Elizabeth, as I suspected, wishes to run me. And if she can't... <laughs> if? If she can't, you'll try to fight me. I see glimpses of malice in her. So you'll fight her? Of course not, dear. <laughs> what do you take me for? I positively hate that kind of thing. As if it matters who takes the lead. No, 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 I shan't fight. But every now and then, when I deem it absolutely necessary, I might have to give her one or two hard slaps. <laughs> I won't have her walking to my house without ringing, so I told Grosvenor to put up a chain. No. Mm -hmm. And she calls me Lulu, which makes me feel sick. Nobody has ever called me Lulu, and they shan't begin now. And what about the others? I found them all cold and a little standoffish. Oh, I have no doubt that her campaign has been waged. Divide and rule. So, I'm going to ask Diver and the Major to dinner tomorrow night. You'll come too, of course. <laughs> Chocolates for her. Curry for him. We'll play bridge and let the Major lay down the law. Then the following evening I shall ask the Wises and talk about fundraising and MBEs. Then the Bartlett's and Irene for scotch and art. It's new in Tilling, I find, to give little dinners, tea being the usual entertainment, so I won't ask Elizabeth for at least a week. My dear, isn't that war? Not at all. It's benevolent neutrality. Well, since if she learns any sense. And now, Georgie, un peu de musica, let us spend an hour with Mozart and repel all thoughts of discord. The new duet came this morning. I haven't had a chance to look at it yet. <laughs> Looks dreadful, Dippy. Naughty Mozart. You must be patient with me, Caro. You know how badly I sight read. Uno, due, tre. started doing dinner. So Algernon agrees. We accept it. Uh, <laughs> accept it what? what? What are you all talking about? Well, I shouldn't really, but as we've gone through all this trouble... <laughs> mm. Your very good health, Mrs. Lucas. And yours, Major. And did you speak to the Queen? Indeed I did. She turned to me and said, So pleased. And what she put into those two words, I'm sure I could never convey to you. Fascinating. Aye, he says, but uh, when petticoats woo, breeks may come speed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and now, Mrs. Lucas, if I may, a toast to absent friends. Absent, absent friends. friends. Absent friends. Absent friends. Mm, nice fakes. From the garden? Yes, dear. By Twistelance, of course. Such a quaint name. No bird. But doesn't Elizabeth give you garden produce? No, just flowers for the house. Nothing more. But I fully understood, at least I... like a thought that... Well, well. Who gives a fig, eh, Pilsen? What? <laughs> <laughs> the Major's correct, as always. We must not let fruit come between friends. Uh. But it's not fair! She's got my house with garden produce thrown in for eight guineas a week, and she lets out her own without garden produce for 12. No, dear, I pay 15. But it's, it's to her 
down in Walgar's box at twelve. I saw it myself. Dear Elizabeth, so glad she was sharp enough to get a few more guineas. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> We read with interest about your Elizabethan fate at Rizm. A, a great success, I understand. Lucia was marvellous. Organised the whole thing single-handed. Mm -hmm. No bid. We so much want somebody at Tilling who can carry through schemes like that. The hospital, for instance, is always in need of funds. Oh? No bid. Perhaps a garden fete would be simple to organise. We could have it in the garden here. Half a crown admission, some tableau vivant. I was trying to summon my courage to suggest exactly that. The use of Mallard's garden has never previously been allowed for such a purpose. We've often lamented it. You should form a committee, Padre, along with Mrs. Wise, who really thought of the idea. And with yourself. That'll make three. Well, that's enough for any committee that's going to do its work without any argle bargle. The Major could read from his Indian diaries. And Irene knows all manner of amusing verses. The boy stood on the burning deck. The deck was made of brass. He did a double somersault and landed on his... Ace of diamonds. Thank you, Irene. We could recreate Elizabeth and Drake from the fate of Drizzle. And if Miss Knapp would supply the refreshment booth with fruit from her garden here, that would be a great help. Oh, how you'll work me. <laughs> and to think I planned a little holiday in Tilling. We must start work in earnest tomorrow. Capital! Most agreeable evening of bridge I've ever spent in this room. Amos' place, though. Oh, I'll say. Makes a pleasant change. <laughs> oh, I'm exhausted. I hate pretending to lose a bridge every night. It's so tiresome. But how happy it made them, Georgie. And what are a few pennies and a little pride if we can bring joy to others? I wonder if you're wise to join the committee, though. It might seem... Mm. I know what you mean. Grabby. Mm. No, you're right. I shall drop a line to the Padre in the morning saying I'm really too busy and beg him to ask Elizabeth instead. Fulton. I chose the fray myself. I thought it accentuated the architecture rather nicely. <laughs> I wouldn't know about that, sir. Oh. Well, could you wrap it up in your special way with a little bow on top and mm -hmm. send it to Miss Mapp at Waster's Cottage, please? It's a peace offering. Very good, sir. resign from the fundraising committee. May I come in, dear? Certainly. Sweet Lulu. First, I, um, I must apologise so humbly, um, such a stupid accident. I tried to open your front door just now and I gave it a, a teeny little push and your servants had forgotten to take the chain down. Uh, I'm afraid I broke something. <laughs> the hasp must be rusty. But didn't Grosvenor open the door when you rang? Oh, well, that's just what I forgot to do, dear. I thought I would just pop in to see you without troubling Grosvenor. You and I are such friends and... It's so hard to remember that my, my little ballads uh, Several things to talk about. But first, let us see what damage you've done. Any sign of rust, Grosvenor? No, madam. No? So sorry, dear Lulu. I had no idea the chain would be up. We all leave our doors on the latch and chilling. It's quite a habit. Yes, I... Always used to in Rizm. 
Let us go through to the garden room, and you can tell me what you came to talk about. Yes, several things. Firstly, I'm collecting for a little jumble sale for the hospital, and I wanted to look out some old curtains and rugs from the cupboard in the spare room. May I just pop upstairs and poke about a bit to find them? By all means, Grosvenor will go round with you as soon as she's back from the ironmongers. Thank you, dear, but there's no need to trouble Grosvenor. Then, another thing, I have heard a little gossip in the town about a fate which it is proposed to give in my garden. I feel sure it is mere tittle-tattle, but I thought it better to come here to know from you that there is no foundation for it. But I hope there's a great deal. Some tableau, some singing, in order to raise funds for the hospital. And it would be so kind if you could supply the fruit for the refreshment booth from your garden. That would be difficult, darling Lulu. I have contracted all my garden produce to Tristifants. The fruit is no longer mine. Perhaps then you could let us have some fruit from Diver's Garden, unless you've sold that also. And the fate, dear one, is what I must speak about. I cannot permit it to happen in my garden. Oh, the ragged tag and bobtail of tilling passing through my hall, or my carpet soiled, or my flower beds trampled on, and how do I know that they will not steal upstairs and filch what they can find? Oh, there'll be no admissions to the rooms in the house. I'll lock all the doors. And I'm sure that nobody in Tilling would be so ill-bred as to attempt to force them open. I will not have my little home sanctuary invaded! As long as I am tenant here, I will see whom I please and when I please. Or do you wish me to send you a list of the friends I invite to dinner for your sanction. Oh, my dear Lulu. I must beg you not to call me Lulu, a detestable abbreviation. Yes, Grosvenor, what is it? The ironmonger's here, ma'am, and he says he will have to put in some rather large screws. Whatever is necessary to make the door safe. Now, Miss Mapp would like to look in the cupboards upstairs and take some of her own things away. Please go with her and give her every facility. Yes, ma'am. It's this way, miss. Where of that group then? Thank you. Yes, it's just been a, a trying morning, that's all. Well, uh, sort of lovely jumble for your sale. What make a pretty penny for the hospital, I'll be bound. It's junk, Major. Breaking and solid items that people have no other use for but cannot bear to throw away. Perfect jumble sale for her. Thank you, Tilling. Fairy business. Au reservoir. Poor soldier. It's such a good cause. 
and so dares my own heart. Elizabeth! Really? You never told me you were holding the jumble sale here, in my house? Dear lady, well, I don't see what business it is of yours. As long as I am tenant here, I shall do what I please, when I please. Or do you wish me to send you a list of people I invite in for your sanction? Yes. Ninepence for the hearth brush, threepence each for the curtain rings, and this little picture from the sixpenny tray. That makes just two shillings. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good morning, one and all. How do you do? How do you do? I'm just on my way to the hospital with the takings from yesterday's sale. Fundraising for the hospital? Whatever gave you that idea? Well, one doesn't like to crow about one's charitable work, but as I was remarking to sweet Susan, one must all do one's bit to help those less fortunate than ourselves. Well, I hear it was a grand success. Yes, not a thing left. Mm, some excellent bargains to be had, we're told. Works of art going cheap. Yes, well, one man's jumble is another man's jewel. You're looking especially acquaint today. I mean, dear, what's the occasion? Lucia's fate, to map, dear, as you well know. Goodness me, is that today? It It'll completely slip my mind. But tell Lulu I may pop across if I can. Such a busy day with the hospital and getting the house ship shape again. Uh, uh, I will try and squeeze it in. <laughs> no promises, mind. The <laughs> <A> reservoir. <laughs> God forgive me for saying this, but that woman tests my faith sometimes. She really does. Kenneth. I'm so sorry, Mr. Pilson. He doesn't often drop his scotch. You didn't really think you were Scottish, did you? Well, that ridiculous accent. I just assumed. Well, he puts it on for effect. A bit of a gear laldi and the pulpit. We all have our little affectations in Tilling, Georgie. Come on, sailor. Make me a cocktail and I'll show you my hornpipe. <laughs> <laughs> Offer I can't refuse. <laughs> <laughs> Right, I'm off. Will I see you at Mallard's for the party, miss? No, with us, never. Never, 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 never. Here we are, Governor. Half, half a crown. Is it? That's right, miss. <laughs> ah, it's quite uh, discombobulating to have to pay for admittance to one's own home. It's all for a good cause, miss. Diver, dear. A few gooseberries for you. From your garden. With my compliments. Thank you, Elizabeth. Most generous. Mm. Susan, dear. Admiring my delphiniums? Mm. Well, I must give you some seed. 
thank you, dear. I, I was just telling Algernon that that corner there was made, may I say, uh, for fuchsias. Ah, oh, dear, you will have to forgive me. I cannot bear fuchsias. They always remind me of overdressed women. <laughs> Such a lovely day for us. How those half crowns must be rolling in. Indeed. Just by the law. So pleased to see you all sitting on my lawn and enjoying your tea. Excuse me, miss. Could you? Uh... Ta, and you are? Elizabeth Knapp. Yes. And uh, this is my humble abode. Look at her. Swanning round like she owns the place. She does own the place. You know what I mean. She wants everyone to think the fate is her idea. Not that. She should be here to put Elizabeth in her place. Jolly good turnout, what? Very pleased. Ought I to say a few words, do you think? I feel Tilly would think it very remiss of me if I didn't. Well, I, um... Hear ye! Hear ye! Hear ye! Ladies and gentlemen, Please be upstanding for our gracious queen, Elizabeth! Excuse me. My loving people, we have been persuaded by some who are careful of our safety to take heed how we commit ourselves to armed multitudes for fear of treachery. But I assure you, I do not desire to live to distrust my faithful and loving people. Oh. Let tyrants fear! For I have come here at this time not for my recreation or disport, but for my resolve in the midst and heat of battle to live and die amongst you all. I know I have the body but of a weak and feeble woman, but I have the heart and stomach of a king. And we shall have a famous victory over those enemies of my God, of my kingdom, and of my people. The queen is dead! I used to play with my sisters hey. golf. Yes. <laughs> There has been some hanky panky. Wish to have the body of a younger man. Yes, please. <sighs> Victory, you knocked it off! Shall we call it a score, draw, dear?